What up, what up? Welcome on in to Inside Baylor Sports, the official daily podcast of Baylor Athletics. On today's show, we look ahead to Friday's first round matchup for your Baylor women's basketball team in the NCAA tournament. We'll visit with Nikki Collin and Bella Fauntleroy as we are one day closer to March Madness. Don't forget, you can catch Inside Baylor Sports every weekday. You can also watch the video version for free over at BaylorPlus.com and on the Baylor Athletics YouTube channel. Like, subscribe, rate, and review the pod. And you can follow Baylor Plus today on X, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. It's the official content network of Baylor Athletics. Think Netflix for your Baylor Bears. Download the app on your mobile device and sign up for your free seven-day trial today at BaylorPlus.com. It's Wednesday, March 20th, 2024. Justin Hoff alongside 2019 national champion and good friend and fellow classmate, Caitlin Bickle. Uh, Caitlin, first off, appreciate you and everything you did on Sunday. Our selection show, the special, was a big hit. It was a lot of fun to watch all the games and whatnot, and and we're one day closer to this thing. One day closer. It's so exciting. Uh, I literally just thought the other day, too, um, like right after the show, I was like, oh, like the first games, you know, kind of the the playing games with Vanderbilt and Columbia are like in like two days, three days. I was like, that – and I don't know why, but it always, I feel like when you're really, really involved in it and you're on a team, it feels so like long because you're just like, okay, like, let's just play. Let's just play, you know, trying to get into it. And now I'm like a fan. I'm like, oh, okay, this is going by a little quick. Um, we're already getting started. So I'm, I'm really excited. I don't have much to watch um, besides basketball. So I'm glad it's, it's going to get going here. After the selection show on Sunday, we caught up with your head coach of the Baylor women's basketball team, Nikki Collin. Let's take a listen. All right, we're now joined by the head coach of the Baylor women's basketball team, Nikki Collin. Nikki, really appreciate your time. We saw the reaction from the team, thought it was great. What's it like to hear your name called again? It never gets old. Um, certainly, you know, you are you have that moment of you see Kansas State go up as a four and you know had you made one more shot, you know, against Iowa State, you're probably on the four line and we're, we're screaming and hollering because we're, we're hosting. But I think... Um, after that, it comes down to matchups and opportunity. And so um, you're just, you're excited to see your name. I didn't even see till later because I had turned that we, we play the winner of a play in game. So that's, that's the unique challenge. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I mean, there are certainly worse draws out there and you got to play them regardless. And uh, so we'll, we'll either be ready for Columbia or Vanderbilt. For me, I guess my question is kind of, and I, and I talked to Justin about this, um, obviously before Big 12 tournament, I kind of said I, I hate losing early in those because you have so much time, mm -hmm. you know, before and, and prepping and you kind of don't, you don't have anyone to prep for, which I think can sometimes kind of put a stall in energy and, and things for a team. But I guess my question is kind of since Big 12 loss, what has been the key focus, you know, for you guys, like for the team and, and kind of the focus for going into the tournament? Yeah, so um, I think it's been a really good week for us. Um, obviously, with the Big 12 tournament ending later the last two years and certainly your whole career, um, it was it was unique for everyone, um, a part of this program. And I'd have to go back to when I coached in the SEC um, to kind of remember what, what this felt like. But I thought for us, it was actually really, really good. If you look at us analytically, um, the first 14 games of the season versus the last 17. Um, the biggest difference for us is, is shooting percentage. And, you know, you look at players like Bella and Sarah that were shooting over 45% in those first 14 games, you know, they're, they're shooting 30% and 25% since then. So, you know, I think this week the focus was very much about, um, you know, practices were short. They were 90 minutes long, but every person did a 30 minute individual, not a group workout, not four guards, not two guards, one guard, one post, you know, at a time and really uh, got a volume of shots up. Um, and, and I think that's, um, you know, certainly your defense can travel and you have to win games in the NCAA tournament. However, the game's being called, whatever your opponent gives you. Uh, but ultimately, we're still at our best when we have the ability to put the ball in the basket and put pressure on the opponent and the opponent. So, you know, it was just it was a really good week for us to get individual work in um, and get a volume of shots um, up. 
Well, this is uh, very interesting. As you, said, as you said, Coach, the playing game, the first four games. So you don't know exactly who you're going to play just yet. As a staff, I mean, as the player is not bad because they'll get to watch this game uh, possibly live. But as a staff, you got to prepare for both both games. What's that challenge like? Yeah, it's it's no different than preparing for the Big 12 tournament when we were going to play the winner of Texas Tech and Houston. And, you know, in that situation, both those scouts were scouts we'd already done, you know, so it's it's not the first time. And ironically, both of them were tarry. Um, and so, you know, I think from that perspective, we'll divide and conquer here. Um, certainly, um, you know, I just watched Columbia a little bit yesterday and I watched them a lot last year because they went all the way to the NIT championship a year ago against Kansas, um, but haven't really spent a lot of time watching them this year. Happy for them. Happy to see the Ivy get two teams. Um, kind of a, a big turnaround year, I feel like, for Vanderbilt. Um, so two teams that are going to be uber motivated just to be competing um, in the NCAA tournament. You know, I think they will be – a lot of emotional energy in that game because of, you know, most of the players in those games have never played on that stage. Um, and so, you know, but at the same time, like the, the challenge is one, you don't get to prepare the next three days um, for one particular opponent. Um, the, the disadvantage or advantage is at their, their struggle, you know, they've got to do a one day prep, you know, when, when one of those teams wins, um, so there's always advantage, disadvantage, you know, they, they get one game under their belt. They've got an NCAA tournament win. Um, so they kind of ride that momentum. Um, but certainly, um, two really good opponents. Um, neither one, we would hope that would one would win, or, um, we feel like we can take advantage. We we've got to play well regardless. Um, so, you know, not going to take any game lightly. Yeah, definitely. And then what do you think? I guess it kind of changes every year in a sense. I think it changed a ton for us, you know, fourth and fifth year that I was there. But what do you think is kind of the easiest aspect of the game for this team and kind of what's the most difficult, you know, kind of the obstacles the teams face this year and then kind of what's just come to them very easily? Yeah, I think the the biggest challenge for this team, um, it's been going against size, you know, significant size in the post. Um, you know, certainly we weren't big last year, but but you weren't afraid to to get physical and meet people early. And, um, you know, it didn't impact us as much. I think our league also um, adding a Crooks, adding Gusters, you know, we, we added like kind of these big bodies to our league. Um, and, and we were certainly successful against Oklahoma state, um, from that perspective, you know, I don't, I don't think Hannah impacted the game, um, but Crook certainly did in both of our matchups. Um, you know, so I, I think that's, that's been a unique challenge for this team. Um, this season is, is not kind of establishing, you know, all the time, like great low post presence defensively, um, and having to learn to when to dig, you know, when, when can we double, who can we double off of? And, you know, in certain opponents, um, that's obvious who you can double off of when you play Iowa State. There's no one, you know, and so that whole idea of of what is what is a ro particular roster look like. I think, you know, our other challenge this year has been taking care of the ball. Like I just think unforced turnovers has been the Achilles heel a little bit of this team, um, you know, kind of forcing action off the bounce, off the pass. Um, sometimes like taking plays for granted and, and just moving the ball and not really being sure handed. And so I think that that's something that, as you know, um, drives me crazy. Um, you know, I, I can deal with a missed shot. I, I struggle with unforced turnovers. Um, and so I think those have been two challenges for this team. What's come easily. Um, you know, I think, I think they compete. Like, I don't think we've had any issues with like, Hey, we're, we're afraid of the moment. You know, we haven't shown up and had anyone, you know, knock our socks off and like, we haven't, you know, fought and competed. You know, I, I think our worst game of the year was a quarter and a half at Kansas where we just, the adversity hit for the first time all season. We didn't respond. I think since then we've responded in every game um, and had to play in a lot of different types of games. And so um, I've always said the beauty of the Big 12 is I think it prepares you for the NCAA tournament because you see such different systems and styles and who Texas is is totally different than Iowa State, which is different than OU, which this year West Virginia was crazy different, um, you know, and it'll be it'll be fun to see what West Virginia can do in the tournament um, just because people aren't used to teams that 
on average turn you over 24 times? Like, are you really ready for that? Um, Cause they did it to everybody wins, losses and everything in between. Um, you know, so I, I think that's the beauty of the big 12 is we see a ton of different styles. Coach uh, a little different to see Caitlin on the other side. You, uh, I know she was a really impactful player for your program. I'm sure that you, you miss her, but you know, Bella's kind of taking over the charge duty. We'll have her on in a second, but what's it like to see Caitlin here uh, asking you questions? Yeah, it's been great. Um, you know, I don't even know if Caitlin knows, but I had, I had uh, dinner with her agent, you know, a couple of weeks ago when he came into town for Oklahoma state. And we talked a little bit about her situation in Greece and, you know, I've always, I've always said like, Caitlin's one of my favorite people because, you know, when you get into this profession, um, when you see someone kind of their career take off and their love for the game develop and, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's why I do what I do. So it's always fun to see her. It's, it's, um, you know, not every success story looks the same, you know, it's, it's not always your best players. It's, it's the people that, that love what they do and, you know, are willing. I always say like, when I know people are loyal to me, um, you know, it just makes me that much more excited to do what I do. And, and that's a hard thing today, you know? So I think anytime you have, um, players that, you know, like, I've always, I've always joked if, if, if I was in a back alley and, and someone you had a choice of like, here's a bag of a hundred thousand dollars, or you can save her life. Like, which would they choose, <laughs> you know, and you can't always predict, you know? Um, and so that idea of knowing, you know, which players, you know, would always like save you over, take that hundred thousand dollar bag, um, you know, makes you feel, feel really good about what you do. All right, coach. Caitlin, yeah. I think you'd save my life. That's what I mean by all that. <laughs> I'd save your life in a heartbeat. <laughs> I promise I'll give you the money back after. <laughs> well, coach, I uh, really appreciate your time and good luck in Blacksburg. Awesome. Thanks, guys. One of the best shooters on the Baylor women's basketball team and a, a sophomore rising star, Bella Fontleroy. She visited with us after the selection show as well. All right, well, we now have Bella Fontleroy, sophomore. You could call her guard, forward. She plays <laughs> on the perimeter. She takes charges. It's really taking over the duty for, for Caitlin Fickle. I know it's got to be surreal seeing her on here. But first off, Bella, your thoughts on just getting in the tournament the second time? You guys reacted well. You guys are excited. Yes, very excited. Um, we just are – we're ready. I know we still have prep to do before we leave, but we're excited about our matchups, um, the region that we're in, and just really looking forward to getting back on the court together. Awesome. Well, hey, Bella. I just want to say hey real quick. Sorry. So excited to see you. Um, I think kind of like my first question is, you know, obviously we, we see the side of, you know, we get kind of the opinion of Coach Nikki and the staff of how practice has been this week, but I kind of just want to ask on a – on the player aspect, you know, cause sometimes players get antsy, you know, you get excited this time of the year, but how has your energy and kind of the team's energy been throughout this week kind of prepping? It's been really good. Very, very competitive. Um, we've been, we've been going at each other. You know, we have such a long stretch of not playing games in preparation now, um, doing our scouts, having the practice guys come in as the squads that we potentially are going to match up against, but everyone's ready. Everyone has that competitive edge right now. And we're just, we're excited and you can tell and how we're getting after each other. Well, I got to say this, Bella, I'm not supposed to pick favorites, but you definitely are one of my favorite players. You shoot the basketball well. You do a lot of the junkyard dog type things. You, I know you've gotten ran over multiple times this season, <laughs> but you always get back up. And uh, just an all-around high IQ type player. Where has your game improved the most, you think, maybe from last year to this year? I would say my impact on the defensive end of the court. Um, I feel like last year I shot the ball well. I think I have more confidence in that now, though, just because of my work in the offseason. But – a lot of that confidence on the offensive end comes from the energy that I help create um, with the team on the defensive end. You know, like you said, taking those charges, I took, took after Kate a little bit in that way. Um, but just, I would definitely say my defense is very impactful. I guard one through five, switch, you know, do, do all the things. And I love it. Like I, I used to hate defense. I'm not going to lie to you, but coach Tony got me to buy in. And now it just, it's one of my strong suits. Blacksburg. So have you ever been to Virginia? What do you think about the trip? Uh, that's exciting coming up. And also the fact that you guys don't know who exactly you're going to play Columbia or Vanderbilt. And you'll watch the game live, right? You're going to watch it live, maybe pause it, write down some scouting report stuff, give it to Nikki, all that good stuff. 
Yes, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if we left early so that we could go and watch. Um, not sure what our plan is yet. We haven't even talked to the staff, um, haven't received any type of communication on that. But yes, I actually have been to Blacksburg, Virginia before. Um, they were one of my top schools too. So it'll it'll be exciting to get back there um, and go and compete. Definitely going to be interesting to see who wins that Columbia Vanderbilt matchup, but I'm I'm just excited to get back there and to be able to compete and play at a high level with this team. Well, double deuce, Bella Fontleroy, uh, one of our favorites, and so hey, just really appreciate you coming on here. Had a great season. Let's uh, let's have some fun in March. Yes, absolutely. Sick them. As Caitlin said at the top, the uh, season starting here. The the really the second season as March Madness gets underway for the women tonight. Columbia and Vanderbilt, the 8 o'clock game, the 12 seeds going head-to-head on ESPNU from Blacksburg, Virginia. Just so you know out there, the Baylor women's basketball team, they are in Blacksburg. Okay, they got there early. They want to watch this game live. Caitlin, you've been a part of these kind of things, whether it's an in-season tournament. How helpful can it be to watch your future opponent live in action? Oh, extremely, extremely helpful. Um, you know, when you when you get a scouting report – and, and coaches will tell you this, it's kind of, it's always their best clips. You know, it's always going to be the makes that they get. Um, it's always going to be, you know, just like the very simple things in their game. Um, but I think, and then you obviously get plays, they're like favorite plays, but I think getting to watch a game live, you kind of just, I don't know, you get like a full feel for it. You know, you, you don't just get their best clips. You don't just get like their main plays, but you can see them consistently, whether it's defense, offense, maybe a team, does a certain thing and you get to see the other team's reaction or, or how they might guard you. Um, but I always thought it was really, really helpful to get to watch that. Um, especially now that we get into postseason, you're not just playing the teams that you see every single, every single year, you know, you're, you're playing completely new teams. I don't think we've even played Vanderbilt or Columbia um, at least not in the past five, six years that I've, you know, watched or been there. Um, so it's, it's a big deal to get to be able to have that opportunity to get to watch them in person and experience that before having to play one of those teams. Five years, right? Were you just adding a sixth year? No, 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 I said my five years and then I obviously got to watch this year. So, okay. Okay. I was about to say, man, college, (laughs) Caitlin, Caitlin was around for a long, long time around here in Waco, Texas. We all know that, but, uh, okay. So Columbia and Vanderbilt eight o'clock, as we said on ESPN, U. I know I'm going to be tuning in. Vanderbilt, they are a one and a half point favorite. Do you have a team that you give a slight edge? Do you give it to the to the power six team or are you taking the Ivy League squad? I don't want to like give away my bracket choices or anything. Um, but I definitely think Columbia will get the win. I don't know why. I'm always I, I think Ivy League can I don't know. They just shock people. You know, you're it, it, they I think they play a different type of basketball. I think, you know, they really, really have nothing to lose. Um, and not to be biased, but you know, like I know Abby Shue, I know how good of a player she is. I know her motivation and, and how good of a leader she is for that team. Um, so I just, I have a feeling that they, they're, they're going to pull off that, that win. Um, but that's just my bracket choice. Okay. Well, we'll see how it all shakes out tonight. And of course on Friday, Marshall and Virginia tech, the 13 seated thundering herd from Marshall, they'll go up against Virginia tech at 2.30 on ESPN2, and then our women will play at 5 o'clock on ESPNU, of course, against the winner of Vanderbilt and Columbia. Let's just say uh, that's obviously going to be a battle, and you don't want to take any of those teams lightly, but if you get the win there, you're most likely to play Virginia Tech, and hearing a sold-out crowd, hearing you know a lot of atmosphere and excitement for Virginia Tech, obviously they had high hopes heading into the season, one of you know, really a top 10 team for much of the year. They've been struck by some injuries, though, and none bigger than Elizabeth Kitley, the three-time ACC Player of the Year. I mean, she averages a double-double every night. She's got a couple blocks. I mean, she's basically a taller version of Lauren Cox. She's a projected first-round draft pick, as is Georgia Amore, who's one of the best three-point shooters in all of America. More than 300 career three-point field goal makes. That's a lot of makes. Uh, This Virginia Tech team, you know, most people will pick them, obviously, to win against Marshall, and that would be a a challenging game on Sunday, but a game that really lingers on if Kitley's 
available or not, because that'll be a major adjustment if she is or if she isn't. Yeah, and, and Kitley's such a unique post. I, I don't think people understand how different she is just from, you know, kind of the normal posts you see, how you how you look at uh, like an Angel Reese or, you know, some of those back-to-basket posts that don't really shoot. Um, but but the tough thing with Kitley and why it's so hard to scout against her or, or kind of play against her is because she has kind of a little turnaround jumper you know, or like a fadeaway jumper that she is really, really good at. And with her length, that's so tough to guard. Um, and I know we've obviously had a tough time guarding bigs in the past, but this isn't one where you can just go double, you know, because of how she faces the basket. A lot of times uh, teams don't send, you know, double teams if, if the post is already facing the basket because it's just too hard uh, to get in rotation. So she's definitely, you know, whether she plays or doesn't play, you, you kind of, really got to change your scout like completely in my opinion um because who are you going to put on her are you going to put length are you just going to try to push her out and make it tough for her um and then when you have amor you, you're just looking at depending on whether kitley's in or not amor's always going to get a ton of shots up you know um when they played lsu this year obviously they, they lost but i think she put up like 20 25 you know she was just going down every single time looking for her shot whether it was mid-range getting to the basket layup a three pointer coming off those top flares and re screens. Like, those are just such tough players that you almost just got to make them inefficient. You know, they're going to get shots up. They're going to, they're going to get those shots. And it's just whether or not their percentage, their percentage is high or low. So, yeah, I don't think there's a lot of uh, secrets with his Virginia Tech team. Obviously, if Kitley's availability, that would be one. And, and their head coach, uh, Kenny Brooks, he's not going to tell anybody until the game, right? He's not going to tell anybody, give any advantage, nor would you want to. And so we'll see where it all shakes out. And you always want to play these teams at full strength. I mean, Baylor wants to play uh, the best of the best. And and so hopefully she's able to give it a go. But we won't know until a likely Friday. But Kitley, 22.8 points per game, 11 and a half rebounds, two blocks. She shoots 56% from the field, 77% from the uh, free throw line. Amore, as you said, uh, 19 points per game, seven assists, uh, one steal per game, shoots 34% from three, a lot of three point attempts uh, for Amore. She's made 81 threes on the season, shot nearly uh, 238. 238 attempts and they got multiple shooters out there as well so uh, really uh you know they set it up well you got a post player and you want to double you're going to kick it out to some shooters but it's a dynamic duo in terms of if they're at full strength you know those two are going to get a lot of shots absolutely absolutely and i think that's with with every team you see with kind of whether they have two or three main players um because that's just their bread and butter you know, it's kind of one of those things like until someone stops them, why, you know, why would you change it? You say, you know, obviously like no secrets, nothing, nothing crazy that they do. They, they run their stuff consistently. Um, I remember I was at the final four last year watching them play at LSU and, and you kind of see them run the, the same play three, four, five times in a row because it's continuously working, you know? And, and I think it's so nice that they know, what works for them so well. And I think that's what makes them so successful is because they're not trying to do something that, that they know they're not good at, you know, like they're doing what they know that has been successful for them and they continue to do that. And I think that's why they have such a good chance and why they made it so far last year at continuing to kind of make a run in this tournament. They're like my brother-in-law when I'm playing him in Madden. He runs the same dang play all the time and I can't stop it, but I do not blame them. If I was a coach, which I'm definitely not, if they can't stop me, I'm running that play down their throat as many times as possible. And a great call out last year had an unbelievable season. 31 and five, made it to the final four, defeated Chattanooga, South Dakota State, Tennessee, Ohio State. They were a number one seed. And so this is a legitimate team, a program that is on the up and up and and not strangers to the Baylor Bears because back during the uh, the bubble. All the way back in COVID, yeah, I don't want to relive that. But in the bubble, Caitlin, you played them, and it was 90-48. to 48, And Amor and Kitley were on that team. I, I'm sure they remember that game. Uh, Sarah Andrews did play six minutes, the only player uh, on Baylor's team that played in that one. But 90-48, to 48, and you guys took care of business against the Hokies. Yeah, yeah. Obviously a, a very different team once upon a time. Um 
but it was really just the defensive end, you know, whether it was, you know, taking some charges or, you know, Queen did a fantastic job at guarding Kitley. You know, I, 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 we talked about this, but not a lot of people can guard that size in a fadeaway shot. But with Queen's length and her athleticism, I, I think she had several blocks against Kitley. And then you think about either having Moon or, or oh, seven blocks against Kitley, which I feel like is unheard of. <laughs> that doesn't happen, I feel like, a lot to someone that size. Um, and then you think about the defenders we had. You know, you think about Dijanae, you think about Moon, you think about Didi, all on Amor, some of those other guards. You know, like, it, I think that's what's going to be huge for Baylor in this tournament, and I know I continuously talk about it, but it's just the defensive side. You know, take away their first and second options, make them inefficient. It's okay if they get several shots up, but don't let them make make those shots in a row. Don't let them get hot. You know, we've had several times where we've played teams that have one or two main people that are going to put 20-plus shots up. Just make them inefficient. Make it so it's tough for them. Make it so it's, like, it's an aggravating game for them. And I think that's just going to be the key for Baylor – Obviously, you still got to produce offense, but but that's going to be a huge, you know, what differentiates wins and losses for them in postseason. For Virginia Tech, they have three players that have made 60 or more threes this season. So they have some shooters. They got some lethal weapons out there. Amor is the number one there. She had 18 points against us back in uh, 2020 there, in uh, 2021, I should say, um, in the bubble uh, 18 points, and as you said, Queen Egbo, seven blocks. She had 12 points, 13 rebounds. Melissa Smith, she also had four blocks in this one, 15 points. Caitlin Bickle had two threes in this game, two of the six threes for the 90 points. But, uh, yeah, we uh, – hey, that was a different time. You don't want Virginia Tech to come in here really angry looking at this box score, but I'm sure they remember that. If it ends up being Virginia Tech and Baylor on Sunday – Kitley and Amor will not forget what happened the last time. So Baylor's going to have to bring it in this one to, to come up with a win on the road in front of a packed house. Absolutely. And and it's especially hard with the crowd and, and them getting to play at home. You know, they're going to be feeling good. You know, if, if we end up getting to play them, you, you know, it's going to be a good feeling. They're going to feel pretty relaxed um, or sort of, at least obviously it's still tournament play, but, but they're not in a new setting. They're, they're going to be in their home crowd. Um, and then I think when you talk about how many shooters they have, uh, I know I, I'm, I'm sure they've they've done a ton of drills because I know we used to do it when I was there um, the last couple of years. But but just making them put it on the ground is going to be huge for them. You know, like I think just making them take shots that that we you know, that you usually wouldn't take um, is also going to be a key, you know, especially whether Kitley plays or not. Um, whether you double or not, you know, you have all those shooters surrounding and you just got to make sure you get into rotation, almost close out long and kind of make them put it on the floor and make them get a different shot than what they're used to. And certainly, once again, do not want to overlook the Friday game. Caitlin's on with us here, so we needed to talk about uh, – we won't get her before – for Sunday's game. So I had to talk about Friday, do the, uh, the daily double, right? I had to talk about both games and what the options are, but Baylor has to take care of business on Friday against either Columbia or Vanderbilt at five o'clock. And then if they're able to do that and Virginia tech holds serve, then they would meet up on Sunday game time to be announced later. That comes typically Friday night. And so we'll see what happens there, but Virginia tech, even with or without Kitley, they're a really good team. We know they're a great team if she's on the floor, but uh, they're going to bring it. They have the home court. They have shooters, and uh, this is a, a legitimate team. And so it's going to be a lot of fun, Caitlin. Uh, looking forward to it all. You got those dancing shoes on. You might need to find some. I'm excited. I was so funny. Yesterday, my parents were like, oh, this will be the first year we we haven't got – we won't go to, like, March Madness game." you know, in the last five years or so. And I'm like, well, never say never. I was like, we could still, you know, maybe travel or something. So, you know, depending on how this first and second round go, I might need to book a ticket and fly somewhere to, to see them play. So I'm excited. All right, that'll do it for today's edition of Inside Baylor Sports, a sport and story production. Thanks for listening. For Caitlin Bickle, I'm Justin Hoff. Have a great Wednesday and sick em bears.